Good afternoon. How are you all doing? Happy Tuesday. And I hope you guys all had a lovely, nice, long weekend. It's really good to see so many of you here today. And as, as you know, we really love these sessions. And I think we're doing some really good work. Now, I just want to kick off today. Before we get learning, we've got a lot to learn today. I just want to kick off with a few questions that's coming in the chat. And I think it's really important that uh, these questions were asked. So Abby, Abby says, are these lessons going to continue because lots of the schools are opening next week? Or some of the schools so listen guys let's just um, be really honest about what, what's happening here the, the idea of these lessons was to always help you guys out while schools were closed and the announcement that was last night I don't know if any of you watched it but a fair few schools are opening on the 1st of June for certain year groups and then there's other um, year groups and schools that will be open on the 15th of June right so it's difficult to know what's going on because we've got to meet various tests for the schools to open and schools have got to prepare. But ultimately, what I need to do is get you guys in a position where you guys can work with or without me. Ultimately, I'm nowhere near as good as your teacher in school teaching you. Like this way is great and we've had a lot of fun, but I'm not as good as that. So we've got to get you to the point where you can cope without me and I'm going to um, think of ways to do that. So to give you an answer is I'm definitely going to keep going till the end of this week anyway. And whether we go on past that is dependent on a few factors. If schools go back... Um, and also the fact that um, my wife's a teacher and if she has to go back, I can't do the sessions during the day because I've got to look after my little baby who who is actually not sleeping in as an afternoon nap as much as she used to. So it's it's really difficult to tell you for absolute sure. All I will say is I can guarantee you I'll keep going till Friday. If schools are reopened and my wife has to go back to work, um, then what we'll do in the meantime is me, Angela and Mr. Arnold will meet and we'll make sure we don't leave you stranded. We'll give you lots of stuff to be getting on with. And this two o'clock se session that we've always uh, held back, this can always be our precious time. You always work at two o'clock for half an hour and I'll make sure we build you something to make sure that you've got work to do, whether, whether or not it's me doing it every day so in that vein just to give you some ideas of the type of things you could be doing just to help you guys out a little bit here's some ideas that I've had so the first thing is what I'd like to know is are, are many of you users of actual Hegarty Maths does any of you guys actually have logins to the Hegarty Maths platform just say yes or no in the chat Yeah, some of you do, some of you don't. Don't worry, I'm going to make provisions for everyone. So if you've got an account, um, what I'm going to show you here, I'm just going to briefly show you. We're going to prepare a, a set of lessons or a set of d instructions for you to maybe teach yourself a whole topic. So we'll say here's an A-level topic and maybe here's a bridging topic and you can go in via this. Anyone who doesn't have a Hegarty Maths account... Um, we have an old website. I think you should write this down. It's called www.mathswebsite.com. I'm on it now. And if you go to mathswebsite.com, this is our free website with like a thousand videos from the old days and stuff like that. There's a section called A-Level. And actually, although this is the old A-Level, a lot of the material is the same. And what we've actually taught in here, me and Mr. Arnold, is we've taught Core 1, Core 2, Core 3, Core 4, Statistics, Decision, and even further Pure. So what I might recommend is, and I'll build you a little system before the, before we close this down, is I might pick certain lessons in here and say, you know what, go and learn differentiation. All the, all the lessons on differentiation are there, go and learn these. So I'll either direct you to what's in Hegarty Maths, the school system, or our old A-level website, which I'll have stuff in. Does that make sense, people? Could you? So just to summarize, me, Andrew, and Mr. Arnold will meet after this session, and we'll try and figure out what a pack for you to do should these lessons finish, as I don't want you to end on your own, all right? The old website, maths website, you don't need to log in or anything. It will just be always available to you and we're going to make it available so you never have to log in or do anything, um, you know, or ha you know, get your school to buy it. The uh, Hegarty website is a school website, so you can only log in if your school's bought it, but most of you, I would have thought, is like that. So Mr. Arnold's posted maths website there, no login required. 
Okay, what we're going to do is let's get on and actually get on with today's lesson. I will come back to you tomorrow and throughout the week with ideas we've got for you guys to make sure that you've got learning and when schools go back. Because I want to help you out even if school's back, but remember your teacher's better than me live in the class. So, Okay, let's get on and learn. Today we're learning about the distance formula Okay, and let me just start off with a basic introduction. The good news with this is when you see it in an A level textbook, it looks really complicated, but actually, it's just Pythagoras' theorem. So, here we go. Imagine I told you to work out the distance of the blue line segment there. How would you do it? Well, hopefully, you guys would realize you'd work out how far across I go, which is three units because I do four take away one. And that gives me, that's three units across. Then I work out how high up I go. And that's going to be four units because I do five take away one and that's four. And then I use Pythagoras because this is a right angle triangle. You guessed it. And we could say the length of the blue line, which I might call AB squared. So I'll say AB all squared. That's the hypotenuse. It's always opposite the right angle. Is going to be three squared plus four squared. So AB squared, by the way, if you can hear my little one shouting in the background, my wife's here at the moment, I'm really sorry, she's not sleeping as much anymore, so she may interrupt us. AB squared is equal to 9 add uh, 16, which is 25. So AB is the square root of this. AB is going to be the positive square root of 25, which is just 5. That's how you would do it. That's all this is going to be. In a more complicated way, you'll see it in the uh, textbooks like this when you do A-level, the distance formula. But it will say the distance, little d, um, if you want to work it out, you take away the x-coordinates and you square them. Then you take away the y-coordinates and you square them. You add those squares together and you square root. Effectively, you just use Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm not really going to quote it like this. I'm just going to show you an easier way to lay out your workings. All right, I'm going to show you an easier way to lay out your workings than that. So let's kick off straight away. And I did find this in an AS paper, surprisingly. So I said, here's the first question. The coordinates of two points A and B are 3, negative 6, and B is 7, negative 2, respectively. Find the exact length of the line segment AB. The way I do it is this. I just write x, y. Underneath it, I write the first coordinates for A, which is 3, negative 6. Underneath that, I write the coordinates of B, which is 7, negative 2. Now, rather than the complicated distance formula, I know I've got to take the x's away from each other and the y's. So I just do that over here. I do 3 take away 7 is negative 4. And I do negative 6 take away negative 2, which is like negative 6 add 2, which gives me another negative 4. So this is my difference in x's. This is my difference in y's. These are the numbers I'm going to square and put underneath the square root. So the length of AB, the length of AB, when you write the length of AB at A level, you put a modulus around it. That means the length of AB, if you put these signs, it's the shorthand notation. It's just the square root of negative 4 all squared plus negative 4 all squared. These two numbers, you square them. And when you do that, you would get yourself the square root of 16 add 16, which is the square root of 32. Now, it says give the exact length of AB. Because this is A-level, automatically it would assume you always simplify your third. And we've done lessons on simplifying thirds. You think of the biggest square that divides into 32 that you can. You write this as root 16, root 2, because root 16 simplifies to 4. So we would get the answer for root 2 for the length of AB or the modulus of AB. And that would be our answer. So great stuff, Freddie, getting square root 32. Although it didn't say give your answer as a simplified third, the examiner would expect you to do it. All right. So um, great that you got root 32. But going back to our previous learning, um, you always got to simplify your third, even if it doesn't say it, guys, even if it doesn't say it. OK, over to you. First one of the day. Nice. Should be straightforward one for you. Off you go. Tell me what the length of AB is here.
Oh, James one seven or uh, seven one six nine five got in that square root symbol in there, as did Libby. Wow, and loads of people are writing uh, the root in there, which is a great way of doing it as well. What's the keyboard shortcut to get the root in there? Good work, James. Good work, Libby. Nice, nice work. But also good work, everyone that also just wrote root. A lot of you are getting two root five. Let's have a sneaky look. Remember, always show you're working. Let's see. Yes, it was root 20, wasn't it? But then you could simplify it to root 4, root 5, which simplifies even more to 2, root 5. Absolutely fantastic. So what a great start there. It's lovely to see so many of you going straight to the simplified version. Remember, when I'm not around nagging you about simplify, you know, Mr. Hegarty's always nagging, simplify stuff, blah, 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 blah. This is the type of thing I want you to remember from these sessions. When you get a surge, try and simplify it, right? Okay, let's now do a more difficult one, slightly more difficult. Here we go. A line has equation y equals 3x plus 4. Find the exact length of the line segment between x is 2 and x is 6. So we've got some line and we just want to find out its, its values between these two points. So imagine we've got a line 3x plus 4, something like that. What we're being asked for in the question is, tell me how long the line segment is between x is equal to 2 and over here, x is equal to 6. That's the aim of the game. How long is this bad boy? So we've got the x values, but we need to find the y values. So we're going to substitute in to get those. All right. So step one, I'm just going to go down here and do some working. I'm going to say when x is equal to 2, y we know is always equal to 3x add 4 so y is going to be equal to 3 substituting x is 2 in here like that and we would get y is equal to 10 3 times 2 is 6 add 4 is 10 so the coordinates here would be 2 10 i'm going to come back i've left a space up here because i'm going to do my working for length up here and we need to know what, what happens to y when x is 6. Well, when x is equal to 6, y is always 3x plus 4. So substituting in x is 6, we get 3 multiplied by 6, add 4. 3 times 6 is 18, add 4, we get y is equal to 22. So we get ourselves here 6, 22. So we're in a much stronger position than we were before. We just had the x values. Now we've got these bad boy y values as well. And so we're in a position to work out the distance between these two. So how did I do that before? Well, I wrote the coordinates. I wrote x, y here. Underneath it, I'm going to write 210, this pair. And underneath that, I'm going to write 622, this pair. I'm going to subtract them. 2 take away 6 is negative 4. 10 take away uh, 22 is negative 12. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here in my face. I don't want it there. So therefore, if we're trying to work out the length, I'm just going to call it length here. The length is going to be equal to the square root of that number squared, negative 4 squared, plus that number squared, negative 12 squared. And when I do that, I'm going to get 16 add 144. And that's therefore the square root of 160. Now, you could leave your answer like that. But remember, I said you've always got to try and simplify it. Hopefully, you spot that a big square number that goes into that is 16. So I could write that as root 16, root 10, because 10 times 16 is 160. And root 16 simplifies to 4. So I get 4 root 10. You can't simplify root 10 any further. So the length in this particular case is 4 root 10 in its most simplified form. And we're done. Smiley face. Okay, so the only thing different about this one, I would say, is that you had to substitute in x to get y before you could even get going. And then the number was a tiny bit bigger at the end, so you had to have your wits about you a little bit harder. It was harder than root 32. So two extra layers of difficulty, not much harder than the first one. I believe in you guys. Off you go. You can do this.
So a lot of you, it's two root five again. It was the same as the last one. That's what you guys are getting. I can't remember what I got when I did it this morning. Let's have a look. I got 10 and 14 for my Y coordinates. Yes, I got root 20, which simplified to two root five, just like you guys. Lovely work. Really, really good there. Really good. So again, exam question, I found it lying around in the AS level. A bit harder than question one. Just had to substitute in X's to get Y's. Keep your wits about you, not make mistakes. And then use the simple um, length or distance formula, which I have a nice way of doing. It's much neater than the actual remembering the formula. Okay, we're going to go to the next one now. We've got two more questions today. The last one's a bit tricky, but this one is just a bit annoying. It's got a lot of algebra in it. So I wanted to do one like this because sometimes you'll find there's a lot of intermediary algebra. That means algebra that's in the middle, stopping you getting on and just working out the distance. So I wanted to do one of those. So here's our next question. The line L with equation negative 4x subtract y plus 29 is equal to 0. Find the length of the line segment between a is little a 5 and b is 3.5 little b. Give your answer to three significant figures. So we've got an equation of a line. We've got two pairs of coordinates, but we've got a little a and a little b that we don't know. So we're probably going to have to find those out to work out the distance. And we've got to round it properly at the end. Okay, let's uh, see if we can do this. Let's just start. We did this the other day by using this pair of coordinates here. This is capital A, which is little a uh, 5. That means, what does that mean? That means when x is little a, y is equal to 5. And we know this point is on this line. So we're going to substitute x is little a and y is 5 into this equation. And it might help us find the value of little a. So let's do that. If we do, we've got negative 4a subtract 5 plus 29 is 0. All I've done is put x in here as a and I've put y in here as 5. Tidying this up, you've still got your negative 4a. Negative 5 add 29 is going to be equal to um, uh, positive 24. Take off 24 off both sides, you get negative 4a equals negative 24. Divide both sides by negative 4, you get a is equal to 6. So we actually know now this coordinate here is not a5, it's actually 6, 5. It has a value. That's going to be handy. Let's do the exact same thing with this bad boy here, B. We've got 3.5 and little b. That means when x is equal to 3.5, y is equal to little b. Let's substitute it in here. Negative 4 times 3.5. Take away b. Add 29 is equal to 0. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times a half is 2. So 12 over 2 is, is 4, 14. So negative 4 times 3.5. That's negative 14. Subtract B. Add 29 is equal to 0. Hopefully you know negative 14. Add 29. That just gives us um, positive 15. So I get from that that negative B. Add 15 is 0. And adding B to both sides, I get B is equal to positive 15. So if b is equal to positive 15, this coordinate here is not 3.5 little b, it's actually 3.515. Okay, so then after all that work, remember I said this is about showing you there's, there's intermediary learning sometimes. The length of ab, okay, we want to find the length of the line segment ab, and I'm going to use the modulus just to help me out here. The modulus of ab, the length of ab, is the square root of, I'm going to go over here and do it, if x, y is there, I've got 6 and 5 as my first pair of coordinates, and 3.5 and 15 as my second. Remember I take these away, 6 take away 3.5 is 2.5, and here I've got 5 take away 15 is negative 10. So when I do that, I'm going to, now I've got what I need to square in here. So I've got 2.5 squared add negative 10 squared. And I get, when I do that, 2.5 squared is 6.25 add 100. So it's the square root of 106.25. You have to tap that into your calculator when it says 3SF. First time probably in these sessions we've used the calculator. You get 10.3077 dot dot dot. Hope I'm still on the page. And if you round that to 3SF, Put a line after your third significant figure and you would get 10.3. Hopefully, does that fit in there? The modulus of AB, the length of AB, is therefore equal to 10.3.
and we're done. And also, oh, my bad. Let's just undo that. And also state, whenever you round an answer, state is the three significant figures as follows. Okay. Over to you here. Key difference here, you've got to do a substitution in to work out the value of little a and little b. Once you've got that, you're back in the old territory and you've actually got to use a calculator on this one. All the previous ones you could do in your head. Over to you. Oh, Resurrection Mars has come in with an answer. I won't give it away. Asmo, Ethan, Amit, Branwen. Some some answers coming in here. I honestly don't remember my answer, so I can I can neither confirm nor deny whether it's right or not. That's an Alan Partridge reference. If if anyone knows Alan Partridge, but you're probably a bit too young for that. Okay, what are we getting in here? We're getting a lot of um, 15 odd answers. Anurag, Mariam, Daniel, Navidia, Musha, Ethan, Rory, Vanessa, Ashkaran. Well done, Asmal, Ethan, Amit, Branwan, Ali. Lakshman, well done. Remember, no, um, no race here, it's about understanding it's about taking your time Mariam got the Alan Partridge reference <laughs> some 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 of you youngsters uh, know Alan Partridge which is which is good okay let's see what I got I can't I, I don't know if it's 15.2 I honestly don't know if it's 15.2 here we go Yes, I did. I got 15.2 as well. I got the square root of 231.25, which when I rounded it to three significant figures, I got 15.2. Lovely. Re oh, Lewis. I like your style. Lewis has only gone and used a bit of modulus. I like your style, Lewis. That's clever. How do you do that, Lewis? What's the shortcut key for that? I like your style. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, Mr. Arnold would have to pick that up with you, Resurrection of Mars. Mr. Arnold would have to pick up what, what went wrong with that. Okay, last question of the day. We're This one's a bit more tricky. So here we go. Let's keep our wits about us. Let's end on a high. Let's end in the positivity. Let's make sure we tackle the hardest question of the day and don't shirk from it. Here we go. We can do it. Okay, two points, A and B, have coordinates... Um, 8a negative 5a and little uh, sorry negative a 7a respectively where a is this constant F the length of line ab is two and a half units find the value of a okay so when i look at this i felt I, I don't always know what to do straight away i don't know the right method but i think to myself they're mentioning length and they've told us the value of the length and we could work out the length using the length formula as well. So I, I play around with that. I go, look, I'm going to work out the length using the length formula. And then they've also told me the length. So maybe I can make those two things equal. In maths and in A-level in particular, often the way to get the answer is to find out the way, the way of getting something one way and find it out another way and make them equal. That's a common technique. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start with what I know best. I'm going to write at capital A is AA negative 5A. And I'm going to write B, the other coordinate, as negative A, 
seven, eight. I'm going to follow my nose. I'm going to take these bad boys away. Eight, eight, take away negative one, A is like eight, eight, add A, which gives me nine, A. And negative five, A, take away another seven, A is negative 12, A. Then I'm going to use my distance formula and say, like we saw before, the modulus of AB is the square root of these two numbers squared. So brackets 9a all squared plus negative 12a all squared. You've got to remember, do not write 9a squared here. This means 9a times 9a, keep that square root, that's 81a squared. Do not write 9a squared. You've got to square the 9 and the a. Similarly here, this will be plus 144a squared. When you square a negative number, it becomes positive because a negative times a negative is positive. 81a squareds add 144a squareds. Well, that actually gives you 225a squareds. And now this is where all our hard work on thirds and all that jazz we did the last few weeks comes good. When we've got the square root of a number times another number, we can break it up into square root 225 and square root a squared. The square root of 225 is a nice whole number. It's 15. And the square root of a squared is a, right? So we get that the length of ab is 15a. After all that horrible distance formula and squaring and all that, it comes out in the wash as 15 little a. But guess what? We were told in the question that it's got a value of two and a half. So we can say, on the one hand, the length of AB is 15A. And on the other hand, we're told it's two and a half units, so we can make them equal to each other. Now, in A level, I don't like dealing with mixed numbers. I'm going to just convert two and a half. Hopefully, you know, two and a half is five over two. So I'm going to say that 15A is therefore five over two. And I'm going to say, therefore, A is uh, 5 over 2 divided by 15, or it's like multiplying by 15. It's like uh, dividing by a number is like uh, multiplying by its reciprocal. So A is equal to 5 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 15. Hopefully you know there's a common factor of 5 there and 5 there. And when you do that, you end up getting the A, I've got to go over here, I should go down, A is equal to 1 sixth. And after all that jazz, I end up getting A is equal to a sixth. Common technique in maths, work out the value of something you're given in the question one way, make it equal to another way of calculating it, and you can work out the final answer. I got A is equal to a sixth. What's harder about this? There's algebra involved. They don't give you the numbers straight off the bat. You can't substitute into a line to work them out. You've got to just follow your nose. You've got to take a leap of faith and trust to work out the distance using the, the old-fashioned method. But it comes out nicely and neatly. You make it equal to what they give you in the answer. And you keep your wits about you with your fractions. You don't freak out. You can do your fractions. Over to you. Made it a trickier fraction. You know what I'm like. I'm, I give sometimes give you a trickier one than I've done. Over to you. You can do it, guys. I like your style, people. Some people get it. Anarag, just see if you can simplify that. I like your style, Anarag, but see if you could simplify that bad boy. What could you do? What uh, whole number goes in, divides into 22 and 30? Ooh, getting some good answers here. 
Don't worry, Andy Rag. It was stylistically, you got there. I like your style. Just easy to just uh, forget that final unit. Not a problem. Ooh, Resurrection of Mars wrote something a bit different. Not sure about that one, Resurrection. Oh, no, I see what you've done. Have you actually... Have you actually decimalized it? No, I'm not sure what you've done there, Resurrection. Like your style, Lottie, putting the A equals as well. A lot of you got 11 over 15. P.S. I don't know if that's the right answer. I was just assuming because so many of you got it, it was. Let's check what I got. Tecla, like your style, Tecla, just think. Can you simplify that A? Is there anything you can simplify? Always got to write a simplified answer. Oh, yeah. See, in the end, you do get, by the way, uh, what do you get? You get 22 over 30, but that simplifies down to 11 over 15 because you can divide the top and bottom by a common factor of two. Well, that was good. I'm really happy with that. We just we did all exam questions today. No mucking about today. Well, yeah, I didn't think it was that hard. I think we did some harder lessons before, so I'm not that stressed out. What we're going to do, Mr. Arnold's going to post the lesson the blank slides, there are four exam questions for you to do. We've written different numbers. So it's a real test. That's the only way you know if you understand this. So come back, re-watch the video if you're struggling, and also go and do these questions, and we've posted all the answers there as well. We'll put it underneath the video, which should become live a few seconds after. Make sure you like the lesson. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tell your friends. And remember, me, Mr. Arnold, and Andrew are going to work out what to do. I'll let you know tomorrow if we're going to end on Friday or going to keep going for a couple of days. We will have to end when schools go back because, as I said, my wife, you know, is teaching. And so it makes things much more complicated than my little one. But also the fact that you'll be in school anyway. So, uh, not all of you, like, it will take time till everyone's back in school, obviously, and we still got to remain safe as a country. But um, we'll figure out a way to look after you guys um, when these end, so don't worry. Okay, I'm going to end it there. It's been an absolute pleasure today. Make sure you look at mathswebsite.com. Have a sneaky look, a little bit of extra homework. Look at mathswebsite.com. Call one and call two, some good stuff in there that you could get ahead on. And, and also, we'll be talking throughout the week on how to support you and how to make you do some extra work, even when these sessions end. All right. Bye-bye. Take care. See ya.